Hi there, I'm Eric Hollenbeck, Director of Percussion Studies at Colorado State University. Uh, this video is basically an instructional video for the Colorado All-State Orchestra and Band auditions for percussion, in particular the timpani etude. And the etude this year is from Garwood Whaley, Musical Studies for the Intermediate Timpanist, page 32. And on this particular etude, you have three drums and making an A minor triad, A, C, E. You got a couple different choices, but in particular, I would suggest that you use the bottom three drums uh, because the pitches tend to lie in the upper part of the range, which is a little bit clear. You can use a 29 or the top three, 29, 26, 23, uh, but that means you got an E on the 23, which is very close to the bottom, and generally a 23 is a very unclear drum in general. So if given the opportunity, I'd try and use the bottom three on that. So the first thing you're gonna deal with with timpani that's unique to this instrument is dealing with intonation or pitch. And in this case, we have to tune them, of course. So what we're gonna do is get uh, basically a tuning fork. And I suggest an A440 tuning fork. Um, and the reason for using a tuning fork, using a pitch pipe or any other um, instrument reference is that this actually can be used in an ensemble. In other words, you're not gonna hear it you're the only one who hears it, and you really um, get you in the habit of using and finding intervals in yourself rather than just matching the pitch to a pitch pipe or a keyboard instrument. Keyboard instruments are typically tuned to A442, so right off the bat, you're starting sharp. So you really want to use a tuning fork is the way to go. So realize that A, C, E, you're just tuning an A minor triad. You have A to C, which is a minor third, and then C to E, which is a major third. So you really need to kind of be able to find those intervals. So the first things first is I would start on the bottom. We tend to hear melodies ascending. Um, we tend to hear them more accurately up than we do down generally. So I'd start on the bottom. So get your A. And sometimes that helps to sing that a little bit. Realize on the 32 inch drum, the A is towards the top. You have D is your bottom pitch. A is about your top usable pitch. Anyway, so you're gonna put the pedal below that. And then you're gonna hit it once, okay, softly with your ear down so you can get a good fundamental. And then hit it again. And you'll notice a couple things. I only hit the drum twice and I'm doing it softly with my ear down and I glist up to the pitch. And that's really probably the best overall procedure to do it on. You don't wanna sing into the drum, you don't wanna overplay those pitches as it'll change your inner ear's understanding of the pitch a little bit, okay? The next thing is we're gonna tune the C up from that. A up to C is a minor third. You can think of it several different ways. I tend to think of it as Brahms lullaby. Obviously, I'm a percussionist. Um, so anyways, you got your C. And C, understanding on a 29-inch drum, the range is basically F up to C. So again, it's gonna be at the top part of the range. So we got our C in our head. C. Okay, again, softly. So you're trying to be three things when you tune timpani. You're trying to be fast, accurate, and soft. Unintrusive, basically. I always think of the acronym FAST in order to, to do that. So work on that. And the next thing you gotta do is do the E on the high pitch, okay? And you can take your bottom pitch and think Star Wars. You can think Star Wars, you can think the space between, though, if you're a Dave Matthews fan, you can think twinkle, twinkle, um, whatever works for you. Okay, now on this drum, 26, we get B flat up to F, so E is basically a major second down from the top of the range. So again, the pedals in all these drums are headed towards the top, which is very helpful. Okay, let me get my pitch again one more time. Okay, and then basically those are my pitches. So if you hear the A. That's your minor triad from there. Okay, and it's okay kind of in a situation where you're playing an audition to check those a little bit. Again, relatively softly. Okay, so anyways, tuning is really the biggest challenge here. One that you want to kind of, to, to actually practice, just like the piece. I wouldn't assume that you're just going to walk up and play. Like spend time on tuning, if not spend as much time on the tuning procedure of it and understanding the intervals and how to get the intervals through the drums well as much as you would actually playing the piece. So a couple things, you wanna make sure in this piece that you have a pretty marcato or staccato sound. So I use um, basically Innovative Percussion BT7, which stands for Bamboo Timpani Mallet number seven, which gets a pretty articulate um, sound. In other words, it kind of projects quite a bit of rhythm and you want that rhythm in there 
uh, for places like the fourth and fifth line of the piece, which really are like measures 11 through 20, um, where we're playing a lot of 16 notes. And we want those 16 notes to be heard um, and clear on that. There's also uh, quite a few metric modulations in the piece. Metric modulations basically means that the beat or pulse stays the same, but overall the rhythm that's within that pulse is changing. And we get quite a few of those. We actually get, let's see, measures 9, 18, 25, and 32 all basically change the, ever, the overall rhythmic value, but the beat stays the same. So the trickiest one I think really happens from measure 31 to 32, where you're actually thinking six, eight. So you got this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that, obviously we're gonna divide in two instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and you just wanna make sure you're feeling that. So we get one and two and three and four and five and six and one e and a two e and a three. Just want to make sure that metric modulation is done correctly. As far as dampening, I basically dampen with the back three fingers and the playing area gently. And I want to basically catch and dampen all quarter notes and all eighth note rest. So all quarter note rest and all eighth note rest, I'm gonna make sure I dampen. Sometimes I'll get two, sometimes I'll just get one, but I'm at least catching something in there, if that makes sense. And that gives the inclination to the adjudicator that you actually are adhering to note duration. And that's really important on timpani, obviously. As far as stickings go, you're gonna end up in a few places. You could not do this, but I, I think it's probably easier to do this as far as crossing over. And immediately that can start in measure three. The places where it kind of is absolutely has to happen is kind of measure eight and measure 18, measure 17. Those. And as you do this, you want to make sure that the crossed hand, which in my case is the left hand, is playing enough. So you're not ha having this sound. What do you got? So you want to make sure your left hand or the crossed hand is producing enough volume. Throughout this piece, you want to make sure you balance the drums. The A in general tends to not project as strongly as the E does. So you're always trying to treat this drum with care and get a little more strength out of the bottom drum. So balance between the three drums, especially when you're crossing over, is really important that you ease up on this drum and project a little bit more and make sure your left hand is in the mix too. Um, there is some crossing patterns within the 6-8 that get a little tricky in measure 25, I'm sorry, 26 and 27. So I'll check that out. Um, there's also some marcato accents that we have. Uh, in particular, I'm sorry, yeah, the marcato accents, and they also have forzandos, which are very similar in nature. Marcato means sharply accented, forzando also means suddenly or immediately sharp in accent. So I tend to treat those the same, and as you play those, you won't really want to create kind of a quick whip stroke off the drum, like versus maybe more of a regular stroke. Again, you get a little more front to each sound, a little more attack, a little more point. So um, generally I try and alternate as much as possible um, and not avoid crossing when it is possible, but there are places you're gonna have to cross on this one. Dynamic wise, um, you wanna make sure there's a couple things that you end up repeating that are at different dynamics. Like when we get to uh, measure three through nine, part of that comes back at 35, you wanna make sure that Again, when you're initially uh, playing it from three to nine, it's mostly at mezzo forte. When you play it later, it's at forte. And then the last, I guess, four bars, starting in measure 40 at mezzo forte, and you wanna make sure those are different than what measure nine, uh, measure 39 was, which is um, a marcato accent. So make sure your dynamics, you only have one piano, and that's measure 18. You wanna make sure that the actually, as much as you can, sounds like um, a piano and it's setting kind of a different dynamic at that point. So anyways, yeah, I should have a lot of fun with this one. It's, uh, I tend to go for the faster tempo on this at 104, it's got 92 to 104. I think 104 uh, makes some of the more open measures like the first two and the last four feel a little more forward in motion. So anyways, have fun with it and best of luck.
Thanks so much for watching this Colorado All-State prep video. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit music.colostate.edu for more information, including the opportunity to schedule an individual visit with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Good luck on your audition.